are. Uh, Sunday morning, second service, and, and we are going to navigate by way of... Uh, uh, by way of necessity, we're going to navigate into Joshua chapter 6 here this morning. So grab your Bibles, flip open to the Old Testament, uh, and you'll remember that as we get into the Old Testament, uh, I love to say this way, Joshua judges Ruth. Okay, so we get beyond the first five books, and then there we have Joshua. Uh, and in Joshua, today we'll be in chapter 6. We'll take a look at uh, the first half of the chapter uh, but as we start the study, we'll also be in Joshua chapter 4, uh, just so that we can lay the foundation as to why we're moving in this direction here this morning. Uh, God has something special for us, and, and uh, it's amazing what He does. Uh, but there's always a question that comes back, because we have to walk by faith when we're, when we're following the Lord. And so I put a title on today's message, Can You See the Promise? It is a question for us individually. Can you see the promise? Uh, we've already started service off and you read the back wall that Jesus is alive. But can you see the promise? Do you see the reality of that, that Christ is alive within your own life? Or are you in a place where you're tottering between two particular positions? Listen, God wants to shore up and he wants to secure some of the, the work that he's doing within your heart so that you might know more about him and that you might grow more in the grace and knowledge of who he is. So can you see the promise? Can you see what that looks like within your life? I know that as we survey the Old uh, or the New Testament scriptures right there in the book of Acts, right at the time of the birth of the church, I know that when we look into Acts chapter 2 and, and we begin to drill down and we see that God did a mighty work when he birthed the church. And what it did in Jerusalem and what it did with the disciples for a moment is, is that it left everybody speechless. Suddenly, you know, the, Holy, the coming of the Holy Spirit and, and the rushing of the, the sound of a mighty wind and all that. And I wasn't there. Now, I don't know what that looks like, but I know what the descriptions are. And the description are is that God was at work and that the people were in this place where they were perplexed, where they were amazed, where they were left entirely speechless to go, did you just see that? What in the world is that all about? And, and, and many people jumped to their own conclusions on it. Some were saying that the disciples were, hey, man, they're sipping on too much new wine. There's something wrong over there, man. We've got a couple drunk folks around here. And the others, you know, they recognize, no, 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 this is a work of God and all that stuff. But can you see the promise? Can you see God working in your life in 2022 already? Do you recognize that God is at work within your life? Or, or, or has it become something that is so, uh, you know, that, that your walk with him is so foggy, it's so distant, it, it's so, watch, here's the crazy word, numb. You're just so numb in your walk with Christ, and you're, you're missing the fact that Jesus is alive. Listen, I'm, I'm hoping that through these Old Testament scriptures here this morning, and through the, uh, uh, the testimonies of what Christ has done in this fellowship, I'm hoping that you walk out of this room at the end of service, that, that you would realize that you've been in the presence of Christ, that you've sensed the Holy Spirit, and that your faith is stirred in a fresh capacity here this morning. Who wants that? Amen. And so what we look at here today, this topical message from Joshua chapter 6 we were remembering with Joshua what God did in their ministry. And we were remembering uh, right here together what God is doing in this ministry. And so flip with your Bibles, Joshua chapter 4. Here's how he starts us off today. Here's how we're going to uh, set up um, you know, just bringing us up to speed as to what's happening here. Uh, at, at, by the time we get to Joshua chapter 4, snapshot on the history is, is that God has been at work. God called out his people, the Israelites, from Egypt. He brought them out to bring them in to the promised land. This is what Joshua was doing. He started that work under Moses. But there was a, the, that generation that came out of Egypt that saw those great mighty miracles, that saw God you know, take and, 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 and part the Red Sea and then defeat their enemies right before their eyes. That generation that saw that and, 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 and the generation that, that received manna every single morning for 40 years, the generation where, where the scripture tells us their sandals did not even wear out for 40 years. I want those shoes and they're not Birkenstocks. Okay. <laughs> those are the best shoes, whatever they are. That generation that was given water in the wilderness, that generation they saw all these amazing works of God, but they were a complaining bunch of people. And that often can sound like the church folks. 
That can sound like the church in 2022. Well, why didn't we do it this way? And why is that happening? And this and this and this and this. And, this. and listen, if you've got a reputation for being a, a complainer, repent, change your heart, and, 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 and man, soak up some Jesus in your life because he's alive and he wants to change that area of your life. And these guys that came out, they never went into the full promises. They died in the wilderness. That entire generation died. Now their kids are coming in. And at the, at the forefront of their kids coming in, we pick up here, Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. We, 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 we get this. Uh, let me just read it. It says that it came to pass when all the people have completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, take for, take for yourselves 12 men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them saying, Take for yourself 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan. From the place where the priest's feet stood firm, you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Well, this is, this is the big moment for them. This is the, 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 you know, the beginning rumblings, the beginning steppings of faith for these folks, for this generation that followed behind, for these guys that were, should I say, they were born in the wilderness, and being born in the wilderness, while they traveled with their parents, while they heard from their parents, their parents never walked by faith. They always complained and they never enter in to the promises. Now, this next generation has the opportunity to do that. And, and, and instead of a Red Sea crossing, what we have here is, is, a, is a crossing of the Jordan. You know, the scholars tell us that, that, that at this particular time, when these guys were crossing the Jordan, that the, that the Jordan in that springtime, it has the ability to overflow its banks so that it becomes a dangerous crossing. And yet what God did was is that he diverted the waters upstream from, the, uh, you know, from that flow of the Jordan. And these guys came across. And the priests stood firm in the middle of it. They were there as an anchor, standing there, you know, you know, saying, hey, we're stepping out here by faith. The hem of their garments went into the water. The water receded upstream. And then all the children of Israel crossed across while the priest stood there in the middle of it. And what God gives them to do was an act of faith. He says, he says, listen, as a marker for what you've done here, take right here, get 12 men, take these stones, and carry these things. Now, these stones, I, I have to tell you about these stones. This is not just some little pebble where the guy just picks it up, puts it in his pocket. It's like, hey, I was hiking with my kids in the mountains, and I found a cool little stone here, and I'm going to take this at home and put it on my desk. Nope, that's not what it was. This was a big, fat rock that, that, that these men had to pick up. They had to put on their shoulder, and they literally had to carry eight miles to Gilgal. It was something massive. It's like a bucket carry, if, for those of you that are familiar with OCR or Spartan racing and the mountain racing and all that stuff, where they carry those buckets. It, it's a heavy rock that they had to carry for eight miles. It, you know, this is not just, again, tucking it in the tunic and cruising away. Totally different deal here. And what it comes to, verse number seven, take a look at this. Verse seven, he says, he says then you shall answer them. Uh, actually, let me back up to verse six. Um, God says that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? And then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. That's the key verse. It's a memorial. And, 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 and what's the Hebrew word on this? Zikaron is the word. I like that word. I know it's not an English word, but you know, it's like, hey man, don't be a zikaron. No, maybe you should be a zikaron, a memorial. God is doing something special within our lives. And we are to be those living stones, if you will, the demonstration of what Christ is doing. You know, yes, we rub up against each other. Yes, the finer, you know, those sharp edges, they do need to come off. And God does that over the course of time. But as these 12 memorial stones were taken from, from each individual tribe and carried over to Gilgal, these things were there as a zikaron, as a record of something notable. God did something amazing. And God was telling his people that they need to remember what he's done. They needed to use these stones to jar their memory. They needed to use these stones to stir their faith and to share with their kids. Flip ahead, chapter 4, get down to verses 19 and 20 now. Now the narrative with Joshua goes on, and we come here to 19, and he says, he says, now, the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. This is exactly 40 years later after leaving uh, Egypt. 40 years later, this happens, right here, right to the day. And they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho, and 
those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan, Joshua, indeed, he set it up, he set them up in Gilgal. So you will remember with me that Gilgal, as we've studied through this in days gone by, the book of Joshua, you will remember that Gilgal was that place of operation. That, that, that as, as God called Joshua to take over the command after Moses' death and to lead the children of Israel forward into his inheritance, into his promise, that Gilgal was the place of operation that they continually came back to. It, yes, the pile of stones were there. And in, those, the, in that heap of stones, those 12 stones that they took out of the Jordan, they were to be a continual reminder that God is going before them into this battle. And in this next step of faith that God had for them, that, that, that God's faithfulness in the past, there's a memorial, that zikaron, something notable that he's done so that, so, that you could, so that they could hang on to the faithfulness of what God has done and that he was going to be with them. It was to stir their faith. And every time they went out on a conquest, they were to come back to Gilgal, they were to regroup there, and then they were to go back out. God's faithfulness demonstrated from the past and it was to strengthen their faith in the moment so that they were able to, to go forward in the present. Now, I don't know if you have those types of things in your life. I don't know if, if, if you have those moments. I don't know if, if you're a person that takes you know, pen and pad or, or, or your electronic device and you keep notes. I don't know what type of life you live. I encourage you as a Christian that you should do those things. I encourage you as a Christian that you should write in your Bible that you should come as a student here on, on Sunday morning when you show up to see what God is up to because God will speak to you if you listen, if you're ready, if, you're, if, if you push off to listen to God. God will speak to you. You, know, you, might, you might hear this short guy with this crazy growing beard thing up here going, ma 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 ma. Why does he talk so fast? Why is he so passionate? I don't know. Talk to God when you see him. I have no idea. That's just what you get. However, Regardless of what I say, God will speak to you individually in your chair. He will bring something to your remembrance. We might be in a text that says, and they piled up the rocks at Gilgal. And all of a sudden, God is speaking to you about going, oh, man, I see that I'm blowing it here in this area. And, 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 and it's, like, it's like God is going, tch, 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 tch. yeah, I want to help you. I want to help you walk by faith and get rid of some of the rubbish that is within your life. How does he do that? I don't know. But he does it by his Holy Spirit. And he does it right here within the sanctuary. Even as we're being fed his word. Now, the memorial stones. Now, this is a ministry right here. We're at church this morning. God, God started a ministry and he's, he's done something for, for 10 years. It's been completely amazing. And I'm always fascinated when I begin to think back over the course of these last 10 years. Because I realize that those back doors, though they are open every single weekend, the people that come through the back doors, you guys this morning, they're different people in different seasons for different times. Some people pass through because of work. Some people pass through because they're in a, a traumatic situation within their life and they, they, they begin to start going to church again. Some people are coming in a place where their life has been completely shaken and one spouse or the other shows up. Some people come because they've lost, you know, a death in the family. Maybe it's a COVID stuff or something else, and they're, they're needing hope. But whatever the reason is that people are coming through the back door, every single season in this church, whether it's week by week, month by month, or year by year, it's changing. It's changing. We, we, are, we are not a fellowship here. In 10 years, I've seen that we're not a fellowship that gathers a bunch of holy gathers just to sit on their hands and to get more information about the Bible. That's not the type of church this is. This is an action-oriented church that believes that Jesus is alive and is actively living a life of faith. And it doesn't fit every single believer. And so, so, so by way of reminder this morning, the memorial stones that they gathered, the Zikaron, I want to share with you some of the history of this church before we finish up our Bible study in Joshua chapter 6. So this, this church started with a call to a man, and that was to me. God put a burden upon my heart, and I did not immediately recognize what that burden was. I did not want to leave the church that I was in. I, had no, I was completely content. I saw that baby, you know, as part of it. It grew from, you know, a little budding handful, a couple handfuls of people. And, and, and man, over the course of, of seven years or so, it was 900, maybe even 1,000 people at its peak and all that stuff. I, was, I wanted to go nowhere. 
I was leading the men's ministry. I was doing all the marital counseling. Uh, you know, I was one of the elders at the church. It was awesome. And I don't know if you've had that experience with a group of friends or, or, or body of believers where it's like, oh, Lord, this is good. I'm, I don't want to go anywhere. God had a different plan for me. And, 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 and man, it took a couple years for him to get my attention because my selfishness was is that, well, I'm comfortable, I'm good, I'm serving God, but God had something else for me to do. It was a bigger work. I couldn't see it in the moment. I didn't recognize it in the moment. And it's like, well, why do I want to leave a big church and go start up a church plant? That is just hazardous to my health. That is, that's not of the Lord. Well, God got my attention. In August 2011, we stepped out uh, to come up here to this city and to plant a church. I'd never been to this portion of North Denver. I hadn't been, uh, nothing. I knew nothing about this area. And, and, and so we searched the city and we came up with a, a location that would at least entertain us, uh, the Mac Center. By show of hands, anybody know what the Mac Center is in here? Okay, some of you know what the Mac Center is. It was the wrong location for this church for sure. Uh, but we, uh, we, we signed a contract with the Max Center, and we got a week out, one week before we were starting services, and um, <laughs> the Max Center calls us up and says, we've made a mistake. We have to cancel your contract. We thought you were the Church of Shepherd of the Hills, not Westminster Calvary. And, and, and what did you think, in, what, what do you think happened in my heart, in my mind, in my emotions at that point? I knew it. I should have stayed where I was. Why am I doing this? This is insane. What do I know about this, you know? So we put a call out to the city. That was on a Monday morning. We put a call out into the city. Hey, do you guys have any other schools or rec centers or anything we can get into? And, and nothing immediately. And, and a couple days later, they ended up calling us back. and Say, well, hey, we got a place up here, 108th in Wadsworth, just right up here by Jeffco Airport. Right there. And so we, man, we blasted away. We went up there and, and immediately we sat down with the people and said, okay, hey, we would, we'd like to rent this. We're starting a church. And they just had a church leave and all this stuff. And so the person was very super cool and awesome to us. Uh, and then, you know, we sat down because we had to sign like this one-year lease contract type of thing. Uh, and, and we saw the price on that thing. And I go, <laughs> on the inside, I'm going, oh, no, we're in trouble. <laughs> and my wife is like kind of kicking me with her foot going, what are you doing? You know, it's like one of those nervous smiles, you know. And I signed the contract. And we left and we went out to the parking lot, got in the car. She said, what the heck are you doing? We don't have money for that. I go, I know. <laughs> and I mean, literally, we jumped back in. I think we had a forerunner at the time. We jumped back in our forerunner and blasted back down to Highland Trans where we lived. And so we, uh, uh, we get there and, and, you know, there's all kinds of things that happened. Uh, I, I don't think I slept on the couch that night. Really, I think I was okay. Uh, but, but it was... All kinds of stuff was happening. A few days go by. A few more days go by. And all of a sudden, I'm at the park sweating bullets. I'm waiting on the Lord in the park and just reading the Bible. Oh, God, I don't know if I heard you. And now there's money due here and all of these particular things and all this stuff. And, and, and uh, my wife, when I go to the park and, and I'm studying the scripture, she doesn't normally bother me. Well, she, she called me. She says, you're not going to believe this. And, and I go, well, I'll believe anything about right now. <laughs> She said, we just got a donation, an anonymous donation. Somebody heard that we were starting a church up there, and they paid the first month rent for us. I'm going, boom, that's Jesus. We're in. Let's do it. And we took off, and, and that was it. And the next course of three years, four years, was a complete whirlwind. And, and, and that little rec center over there, it only held 140 people, okay? But, but, but man, it suddenly, it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And now we're at the point to where uh, we're in 2014 and we're in irritation to the staff over there at that rec center. Bless their heart. There was just too many people coming. And, and, and man, you know, in a post-COVID world, you say, what? Too many people? Come? How can that be? Well, it was. And that's what was going on. And, and God did it and he did it and he did it and he did it. Well, their irritation grew and they end up giving us um, this ultimatum because they wouldn't rent to us more time so that we could, uh, you know, spread out the services. They, they, they wouldn't give to us any more space. It was, it was just done. And, and there was this deadline that came. And even though we, we had a great relationship with them, it just got like tense right there in the moment. And so I'm looking and I'm trying to discern, God, what are you up to? I don't understand what is going on. Lord, we've been faithful with all of this stuff. Why is this coming to a dead end and, 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 and everything? Uh, and, and we'd been searching the city for a place to move, for a place to go and a place to meet. Nothing. Nothing was happening. 
Because in this city for 32 years up to that point, that churches, they could not assemble in the retail of the commercial spaces that was like, there's, they're all over our city, man. There's all kinds of places that, you know, it's like, well, why can't we rent this? Why can't we rent that? Because the zoning laws, they, they prohibited it. It was impossible. And we get late into 2014, and that, that, that deadline, if you will, is coming for us to have to be out of, of the rec center. And we sent a letter to the city. And, and, and to our surprise, God made a way where there was no way. And he did it at the highest levels of this city. Because my letter, letter went into the planning department, and, and uh, I don't remember all the people that were attached to it, but I do remember the response that I got from them and when I talked to them on the phone. That I was told, uh, Pastor Kramer, uh, the letter that you sent to us really created a stir here at the city. Uh, we've contacted the uh, city attorney, the city manager, the city council, the mayor, uh, and um, we're, we're working with zoning and all this stuff right now to, to make a way for you guys to rent a space. Because I told him, I said, hey, we represent the faith community. We want equal and fair access within this city. And apparently that phrase, equal and fair access, I didn't, I didn't realize it at that time, but apparently it was like a buzzword. And if somebody drops that phrase, you better serve those folks. I just think, they, I just think that Jesus' hand was, was going before us. And a, may was, uh, a way was made. And that zoning law that had been in place for 32 years, it changed. Now we fast forward a little bit. We get into 2015. And, and this is some of what I had mentioned to uh, last week. But this building right here, it closes. We got the lease here. It closed and all that stuff. Now we have a big, nasty building. None of these walls were here. It was, it was, it was terrible in this place. It was disgusting. And, and, and we have this building. And, and I came in on that morning, I sat down right there in a chair, and, I, and I, I'll never forget, I had these, I had two emotions. I was so ecstatic that something happened, and then here we are, we have a place. And then I was so scared to death, I'm going, I have no idea what to do next. We have a big, nasty, empty building right here, and I have, I, I don't know, where do I go? What do I do? And God spoke to me out of Joshua chapter 6, verse number 2. He told Joshua, he says, see, I've given you Jericho. He reminded me, see, I have given. He was indicating to me that I'm with you and that there's still much more I'm desiring to do in you and through you. And, and, and when he spoke this to me, man, suddenly I was refreshed and I, I bolted out of these doors. This used to be the entrance door right behind you guys. I bolted out of here, jumped in my truck, driving north on Wasward, and I'm, I'm just ecstatic because God spoke to me and I had no clue what the next steps were like, but we stepped out. And, and, and we interviewed a couple contractors, and then we end up hiring a contractor and all this stuff. And um, in between that time of uh, hiring a contractor, realizing that there's a deadline over here at the rec center, and, and, and making this place, we have a certificate of occupancy so we can come in here. Well, we, we were a port portable church. Everything we had was in one of those, you know, those, those big... Uh, cargo trailer types of things and all the equipment that we had in there and, you know, from the pulpit to, to everything else that you needed for children's ministry and just whatever you needed to do church. It was in that, that trailer and we'd park it right out front here. And they stole the trailer. Gone. So now we're getting kicked out of the rec center. We got a nasty building on our hands. That's great. We don't have the money, by the way, to finish the building project. We didn't have any money to start the building project, I should say. Forget the finishing. We didn't have money to start it. Our trailer's gone, and now what in the world we do? Now, if you followed us on Facebook, and or if you're attached to the Facebook church right now, you can go all the way back there to that time and look and see what happened. You know, sister churches started donating, and all these things started coming in, and the next thing you know, there's a, there's a path forward where there was no way, where we absolutely had nothing. And, 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 and the next thing you know, 2016's upon us, that was 15, here we are. We've been able to stay a little bit longer over at the rec center here, and, and, and now we had $90,000 and, and we hired a contractor to start this building process. But that bill of what we were going to pay, it rapidly grew up to $215,000. For us as a little church is going, well, we don't carry a debt. We're not taking out a loan. Uh, we're in trouble. And all of a sudden, right out of the blue, and we didn't even know it until 30 days after it was done. Out of the blue, this entire uh, development here was sold. It was sold to somebody else. And in the middle of that particular sale, in that sale, they took our construction balance because there was work going on within the thing, and they paid it off. They paid, you know, we had 90, they paid like $125,000. It's just like, yeah, okay, it's paid off. And, and then the landlords come here and they sit in the front room with us and, and they're telling us, hey, you guys have new ownership and all this stuff. And I'm going, uh, well, how do we pay them for all of this stuff? And he says, 
oh yeah, don't worry about it. They just paid it in the transfer of the building. It's all done. Go, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> what? No, no, we'll, we'll pay you. No, 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 you don't have a balance. It's zero, it's zeroed out. There's nothing there. And I'm going, oh Jesus, thank you. Thank you for helping us yet again. And what's the point of all these crazy stories? These are just, these are just some examples of God going before us. These are just examples of God making a way where a way didn't exist. And while I have a lot more things to fill in the gaps and a lot more situations that took place, yeah, that's true. These are kind of some big hinge points, if you will, along the way of ministry. And, and as we look back to what God has done, right now here in 2022, we're standing here in the moment where God is doing something new in this fellowship. And he said that. And what he wants us to do is the same thing that they would do in Gilgal, is they would reconvene in Gilgal for the next venture of faith, for that next stepping out in faith. We need to remember what God has is, is done for us already, the faithfulness of our God, so that we can go forward taking steps of faith and knowing that God's not going to leave us high and dry. He's not calling us to a place to do something, you know, lunacy and to create our own plan. He's calling us to follow the leading of his Holy Spirit. He's calling us to trust him to make a way where there is no way. And we come to Joshua chapter 6 here, verse 1 and 2, which says this. Now Jericho was, sec was securely shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. Now, if you're following the story here, you realize that what God is speaking to Joshua is in advance of them actually taking the city. He says, see. And I know we started the service by having you guys look back and say, Jesus is alive. And, and, and most, of you, most of you shared that. Yeah, Jesus is alive. But as he was following what God had called him to do, God was saying, can you not see it? Do you not realize, based on what you've seen in the past, based on the crossing of the Jordan River, based on how I've, I was with your parents, I never failed them, even though they were stubborn cusses, I haven't failed you, I've already made the way. You guys have these, the zikaron, the memorial stones, you have all of that stuff there. Will you not trust me? See, I have given, an exclamation mark in the New King James uh, version here, that, that God was just telling Joshua before that battle happened, before the, they went into this next uh, you know, series of conquests, if you will, that he was with him and he would give him the victory. Do you believe that in your life? Do you believe that in your walk of faith? Or are you stuck on the sidelines because you thought that God has forsaken you? Or are you stuck not making progress in your, your Christian life because you've forgotten that Christ is alive? Have you pulled back from coming to church? Have you pulled back from prayer? Have you pulled back from reading God's word because you have forgotten that God is for you and not against you? Have, have you pulled back from taking crazy, insane steps of faith because it's like, well, uh, you know, you've gotten tied up in this age that we live in right now where everything is about the data and the science. Listen, maybe so, but that's not a walk of faith because it's seeing what is not there through the lens of God's faithfulness. And that is the rub gang in this part of our state, this part of our community, because everybody is so educated. They become so educated that they have forgotten that what God does is the impossible. How do you explain it when Jesus touches an arm and an arm grows back? Well, how do you explain that? Where does that fit within the, uh, uh, you know, the framework of science or the medical community? You can't explain that stuff. You can either receive it and believe it and move on, or you can stumble and fight with it. The Pharisees, they stumbled. They fought with Christ over this. You can't do this. You can't do that. You, you can't do all these particular things. Okay. It's your call. It's your call. But can you see what God is up to? And the idea, the very first idea of these two verses is nothing more than th this is th the secret of my success. This is Joshua's story. But what part of it is your story? The secret of his success, it came from God's power and not from his ability. And the secret of our success in our individual Christian lives is, is, is from God's promise, from God's faithfulness, from God's power, not your ability. Well, how do we know that? Well, the Old Testament tells us this. Take a look at the screen. You can see this on the screen. Listen, it, it, it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. 
It's not by the abilities of an individual person or the collective force of an army. It is by his spirit. God is the one that goes before us and opens and closes doors. But I tell you, when we drift into these places as well-intending and well-meaning Christians where we're not, we're not anchored into an active, ongoing relationship with Christ through his word, through personal prayer, through staying attached to him, abiding in his word, then all of these things that God has given to us in his word, in the Bible, become nothing more than stories of the past that have no relevance in my life today. That's the lie. That is, the, that is the, the stumbling block, if you will, to the church in 2022. And I would share with you that, that for this fellowship right now, in, in, in what God has done for the past 10 years, and what God is going to continue to do until the time that he takes this church away, or, or I die, or you die, or we all go home to be with the Lord, I don't know what that looks like, whatever happens with all that, as long as we're looking to him and yielding to him, he is going to continue to do those things that men say that are not possible. And in this moment of, of, of what Joshua was doing with leading these folks, it, he was taking them into battle, but there had to be a, a, a faith march, if you will. There had to be a, a rallying of the people before God did what he did. And God's just nothing more than saying is, is Joshua, I got something for you, man. And in verses three down through 14, that's the, the, the next step, that's the story. That is the story of faith that was laid out there of God calling them, God, God telling Joshua and calling the people to step out in faith. Now, by a show of hands, please participate with me if you can. Even if you don't know Jesus or if you're a visitor, this is such an easy participation thing, you can do it. If you were with Joshua at that time, Knowing where your spiritual temperature is, I am going to change this. I don't want you to participate on this. I don't want somebody to feel weird. Okay. Uh, but knowing what your spiritual temperature is right now. Okay. God wanted them to walk around the enemy's city. If your pastor just asked you to walk around the block for six days around this church, what would you tell him? It's too cold. There's snow on the sidewalk. You're smoking crack. There's something wrong with you, dude. I'm going to a different church now. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's a, you know, it's not a like kind, but you know, that's similar to what happened there. Just was saying, come on, boys, let's do this. We're going to put the army out front. We're going to put all the little flute players behind him, and then we'll put the Ark of the Covenant, okay? And then we'll put some more army people behind him. Okay, let's do this. Now, don't say anything to anybody. We're going to walk around this thing. Let's just go around here. And they got 600,000 people cruising around this sucker, right? The men of war were there, not the women and children. Go walk around that thing. They had to walk around that thing for six days and not say anything. And then, then God does something amazing on the seventh day. Yes, 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 and that's true. Listen, for this fellowship, for me being your pastor, for, for, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you just started here or if you've been with us the whole time. It, it doesn't matter. This is a church where I want you to be a people that have an appetite for God's word, not for some tasty information or some, some half-cocked stories that, well, it stirs my emotions. I feel great going out of here now. No. My stupid stories will fail you, but God's word will never fail you. I, 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 want you to be, I want you to learn how to be a people that is excited and you know how to worship God personally. And the reflection of that personal worship, it spills out in the sanctuary when the saints assemble together here on Sunday mornings. It, not something that is coached along by me as the pastor. Hey, do this and raise your hands and do you know, all this stuff. No, 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 no. You are responding for, to God because you hear God, because you know God, not because you think you have a chapter and verse memorized or a principle memorized. No, 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 no. It's because you're walking with the living Christ and the evidence and the fruit of that within our lives, gang, is manifested when we assemble together. I, I, I want you to be a fellowship that, that you're, you're built up in Jesus and you know what he's said and you're regularly taking steps of faith to follow God, both corporately in this church and individually within your homes. You know what that looks like because you're hearing God. And that is what Joshua's secret was. And that is what Joshua was leading the people in. And that gang is what the New Testament tells us in the book of Hebrews 11 and 6, that without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. That's crazy. And so I did number two. What was that? Well, what, what is that? It's, it's attempt the impossible. Again, verses three down through 14. God required Joshua and the people to do something that sounded foolish and impossible. They had to put their faith in action. They had to walk around Jericho. They had to circle it in obedience. But then the victory came. Then that amazing moment, it just, it just happened. And God did it. 
And these are why I share some of the stories with you here. I mean, I had to put faith in action. Jeff, do you really believe I'm calling you to start a church plant? You've told all your friends and you've had all these little prayer meetings with the churches and all those people that are sending you and oh, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. Do you really believe that, Jeff? And you had such a, a tremendous support and your very first service in this city was, you know, maybe bigger than your Sunday morning now and oh, all that. And then the next Sunday after the launch, it was you and your family there. You had a great time. And then you lost your worship leader even back then. And there you were with iPod worship, raising your hands to an invisible God in a, in a rec center, in a room that holds 140 chairs, and there you and your family were worshiping God. Do you really believe that I'm going to do something? Yes, Lord. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you, as Job said. Yeah. And we come to the final idea here this morning. I did number three, verses 15 to 16. It says this. It says that it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and they marched around the city seven times in the same manner. So seventh day, seven times around the city. And on that day, they marched around the city seven times. And it was only that day. Verse 16. It says, in the seventh time, it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. God did something amazing. They followed him by way of faith. They stayed in this place of obedience and God shows up and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He told Joshua in verse number two, he says, see, I have given Jericho. And it didn't happen right away, but when it did happen, it was certain. And God has given you a verse. If this is your fellowship, 2022, God has given us Isaiah 43 and 19. And he says, can you not see it? Can you not see that he's already begun? Do you realize what God is up to? Do you realize that we're moving into this space in our world, in our country, in, in, in our state, and in our city? We're moving into a post-COVID situation. For two and a half years, plus minus somewhere around there, this church in particular has been completely devastated. We're in a place of, of, of rebuilding. Yes, the online activity was amazing and great, but we all love to see faces. Let's be honest with that. Okay? It, it, and while we used to run two services, you know, before this span of COVID, before the chaos, before all of that happened, yeah, that's true. We're, 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 we're watching God reassemble, and it's a new group of saints. It's a new work that is happening right before us. In January, what did we do? Well, God was pressing upon my heart to start a, a, a second service. That's the 8 o'clock service. Why? Don't you guys have enough room in the second service? Sure. Why am I starting a second service at 8 o'clock in the morning? Because God said to go around Jericho and to be quiet for six days. And then when the victory came on that seventh day, it was plain, it was visible, it was there, but you have to be able to see it by faith. I want to let you know that that little second, or that little first service that started out with just kind of leaders, somehow the word is getting out and it's going farther and farther, and there are more and more people coming. It's not five people, it's not 10 people, it's not 20 people, it's not 25 people, it's not 30 people. Listen, we're, you know, four weeks into this thing, I think we're up to about 50 people or so that are coming out to the 8 a.m. service. And as, as the closer we get to summer and the days are warmer, that service is going to blow up, and then this one will change. It's just true. And God's doing something new right before our eyes. But it required a step of faith, and all of the staff is here is looking at me going, okay, Pastor, if you think we should do that, but uh, 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 no, let's do it. Oh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's do it. God's up to something amazing, but he's calling us to step out, and he's calling us to see what he can do as we trust him. That's it. That's the lens of faith. That is being able to see what is not presently before your eyes. We trust God. When God has spoken to us, we trust him and we follow him. And, the, and that third idea in these last two verses that we're looking at today is, is, is again, it's, it's the kingdom is yours. Joshua told them uh, once again, they got to give them the city, that the battle was already run, won, but they had to go get it. Do you believe that in your Christian walk right now? Maybe, maybe, maybe you have forgotten a very important truth within the scriptures. Jesus said this in the Gospel of Luke. You can see it on the screen here in chapter 12. That he said, he says, don't be afraid, little flock. For it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Do you believe that? 
Do you believe that it, it brings our Father great happiness to give us the kingdom? Or are we so concerned about our little mini communities that the family of faith, that the purposes of God, that the mission of the church, which if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ that you're a part of, the mission is yours. We have one command, that is to love each other. And we have one mission, that is to go and to make disciples. That, that is it. And it doesn't mean that we don't have a life and sports and vacations and all this other fun stuff that we get a chance to do. Yeah, we do all of that stuff. But it's in the middle of us living our lives that the character of Christ is coming out. That, that is, is, it's not this self-consuming, uh, selfish focus that it's all about me, myself, and I, and what can I get and how can I enjoy, but rather I realize that, that oh, well, Jesus says that those who want to be great in the kingdom of God become the servant of all that I'm willing to be kind. Be kind in your marketplace today. And let me tell you something, you're going to glow like a glow stick in the dead of night because our community is filled with people that are rude, that are impulsive, that are pushy. Uh, you know, they, they don't give a rip in the marketplace about you. I mean, go out there and try to go shopping, you know, and, and these things. The tension within our community and God has dispatched you guys Right there to all of those places where you get groceries, where you go to Costco, where you go to King Super, where all of this stuff happens, you know, show up with a smile on your face, to have a good attitude, to be willing to do something that is honest and just. And he shines through you in a powerful way. And I just want to make sure that I'm reminding you of those particular things because that is the work that God is, is, is present and he's actively doing something. And then the next thing you know, people are, are talking about you and going, wait, what? Hey, and you make friends at the car wash, you make them at the gym, you make them at the supermarket, you make them wherever you find yourself, you're not making friends everywhere. And I don't know if I shared this last week because this is um, last Sunday. This literally just happened within the past week again. You know, we do, uh, Jody and I, we do a, a cycling class on, on Saturday morning. And... Um, in that cycling class, uh, I, I think I may have shared this with you, but let me share it again, maybe from a different vantage point. That in the middle of that cycling class, at the beginning of the cycling class, the instructor is up front and she's talking to Jody and, and she's telling her, hey, uh, you know, uh, and she's doing this real loud because the class is like quiet. She says, hey, uh, I've recommended, you know, some people to come over to your church. Watch. And, I, and, 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 and if these folks are watching, I don't mean anything weird here. She's, God is using somebody that is kind of distant from God to tell other people about God and show them where they can go to get fed. What? What? How does that work? I, I don't know, but God is up to that. He's doing that. And God has more battles for us to win. And I know we're in this we're still in this weird season, I, I, I think. I don't know. I, who knows where this church is at? Are we Adams? Are we Jeffco? Are we on the border? Are we struggling? I don't know. But I know that COVID should be a thing of the past. And I know that people are super mean here in our community that if you fall on this side or that side, I, I, I fall on Jesus' side in the sense that I want to be a peacemaker, I'm not looking to stir the pot. And we're here in 2022 and and, and God is clearly on the move again. If, if, this, is your, if this is your church, if, if this is where you're, you know, where, where you're pitching your tent, so to speak, this is your fellowship. In the last 30 days, you can see all the changes that God has done on around this place. Some of them we welcome super rapidly. Others of them were like, oh, Lord, really? Is this going to happen? And, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, whatever you think, God is on the move. He's doing something amazing. And literally over the course of this last week, we've had three more, op I've already told you about opportunities, we've had three more opportunities that have come forward. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a brother that goes to this fellowship that he sent me a text on, on uh, I think it was a Thursday or a Friday afternoon about a week ago, and he says, hey man, you know, uh, you know Grace FM has an open slot here at, at such and such a time in the afternoon, why don't you try to get on that slot? And, and I, I mean, I responded to him so fast, like, cool, thanks, boom. And, and like, I was on the phone, like calling down there. I was like, hey, can we get on this spot? We'd love to, you know, we'd love to move from the, the midnight mass to something more in the middle of the day there. You know, the, the people that we reach at 8.30, at 8.30 p.m., they are some, they are some important people at the nighttime. 
And so I jumped into that thing, and, and within a matter of moments, it was a, it was a big fat, uh, no, that one's already filled up. We've got a waiting list on it. And I go, oh, okay. But that's how the conversation goes. But we have this one. We haven't offered to anybody else. We've got a primetime spot that is open Monday through Friday at 1030. Would you like that? Yes, put me down for that. <laughs> All right, let me, let me check on a, a few things over there because they had a big national pastor that was in that slot. I'm not that, by the way. I might be big in different ways, but... Uh, um, so they, 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 they checked, their, they did whatever they did. I don't know. They ended up calling me back in 24 hours and said, it's yours. Awesome. So we stepped out and we took that on. And it doubles the price of what we're doing things on the radio. That's true. And, the, and they shared with us in the process. And oh, by the way, right now, right now, we're going to also keep you on at the 830 slot. So you'll have 1030 in the morning and you'll have 830 at nighttime. And we'll just kind of leave that there for this next season and just kind of see how it goes. Oh, Awesome. Amazing, great. So we get the prime time in the morning and then we also get the, 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 the late evening stuff and all that. And I wanna tell you, when you start broadcasting this type of message, even within our family of Calvary in a prime time spot, the dog that gets hit with the rock is the one that is barking the loudest. And we've had some dogs bark a little bit on us. Uh, in, a good pa- in a good positive way. And that is super intended. That's exactly why we wanted to move into that prime time spot. Why? Because there's a whole mess of people in Christendom, uh, and maybe it's, not even, maybe it's not even the body of Christ. There's a whole group of people that are in this place that are super stubborn towards Jesus, and they need, to be, they need to be quickened to the faith. They need to come to repentance. And man, that was one of the first things that, that happened two days into the radio broadcast. Can you believe that? Well, another thing happened here. And that is, is that there was a door and there was an opportunity uh, that, that was presented to the board that, that it just flew over. Nobody was looking for this. And it happened on Tuesday night of this week. Listen, we haven't had an assistant pastor here for right at three years because of all the stuff that was taking place, all the stuff that was going on. And, and they just reopened that full-time assistant pastor slot back open. And, and March 1st, we have... Uh, Pastor Justin coming back on staff here in a full-time capacity here. It's amazing. Now, here's the crazy part, okay? Okay, so the, here's the crazy part. It, it, it's, it's basically what God has done in this fellowship. His salary has been paid for for the entire year. So he's safe for the remainder of the year. <laughs> How does that get worked out? We didn't ask you for anything. We didn't ask for this. We didn't ask for that. How is God doing that? I don't know. You know what the next thing is? This was also was given to us here this week as well. That we were contacted, actually it was last week, uh, and I didn't share it with you this past Sunday. I told you you had to wait till today. Uh, the landlords have contacted us for an expansion of space. You, you just heard the stories here this morning about how difficult it was to get here and to do these particular things. I don't know what the outcome of this thing is going to be. I, and I don't know anything of it, but we're going to find out. And, and, and the expansion of space of what they... Uh, have, have offered to us, uh, yes, it's still within this complex and there's a, a, a few uh, legs that are attached to it. But as they presented the thing to us, we said, well, you know, we're not sure that we really want to do this. You know, we got so much money invested in here and all this stuff. And, and you know, we don't, we don't have, you know, $300,000 to go into to remodel a place and to bring it up to code and do all of those particular things. And he says, put it in the thing is to that to be a part of the condition of what you want before you would entertain this. You should know that we're coming to the end of our lease here. And for them responding and reaching out to us, we have been asking God, God, what are we going to do in this next space, this next season? And they offered us a wonderful site that's just up the road. And we're just, we're just replying to what they said. We're going to ask them to pay for all the tenant improvements on this thing. And we're going to see what God has. And so today at 11 o'clock, if you'd like to see what that space looks like today, there's not rats over there, praise the Lord. It's not like there was in this place. It is, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a much better spot, but it puts everything under one building. Instead of having three buildings, how we have right now, it, it puts it all under one, one roof. And Ian will open that up, or Brian is, I don't know if Brian's in here. One of these guys will open this thing up at 11 o'clock. It's two spaces down here right next to the furniture store. Go over there and take a peek at it. What's God going to do? I don't know. But I'm willing to walk around Jericho or I'm willing to walk around 
and say, Lord, do you have something that's going on here? And what I'm asking for is your participation in this next step of faith. God is up to something new. What is it going to look like six months, a year, two years from now? I have no idea. I have no idea. All I know is, is that what's happening right before us in the, the providential hand of God creating circumstances and, and doing things like, wait a minute, what, Lord? You just paid for his entire salary for the whole year? How did you do that? We weren't even like looking for that right in this second. We weren't expecting that to happen. Lord, how did you move us here in the prime time? Lord, why are you opening this door for an expansion space? Lord, why did you have us, you know, 30 days ago open up by first service? What are you doing? I don't know. But my question to you is, can you see it before it comes? That's the question. And if you can see it, and if you really believe what I pointed to you in the back, that Jesus is alive, if these things are really true, then what I would say to you is, is stay close to your God because he's up to something awesome. Amen?